busy at late, so the vlog's a little bit behind. But um, this is Bank Holiday Monday. Bank Holiday Monday, uh, May the sixth, and it's our daughter's, our youngest daughter's, thirtieth birthday. So happy birthday, Charlotte! Five days working at Badminton and had a really nice surprise yesterday, so that was really nice. And at the moment, we're heading to Lee Street, Street. Yeah. Um, put on some water, and then we're going to turn around, go back to all cannons to pick up our friends, um, James and Helen, to give them a tow down to another little spot cannons. for them. And then we're going to turn around and come back down this way. This is uh, our little journey as we start to leave the camp and Avon. Yeah. It's wishy-washy day, so the engine's got to be running. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that's what we're doing today. So we thought we'd just go for a little cruise. Um, just turn around here, look, and see that the dreaded reeds are growing. And very shortly, you won't be able to see the tank path behind. However, it's been really, really lovely here. Um, I do love it. We've had a lovely time here. Yeah, it's a nice, beautiful canal. Yeah, it's lovely, lovely time, villages. Time to move on. Yep. So we're going to be heading slowly for pastures new, down towards Windsor. Then up to Teddington Arm. No, Teddington Lock. No, Teddington Lock, Teddington Lock. Brentford, turn left, not the Grand Union. The Butterburrs. Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. <laughs> Butterburrs. We started our long, slow journey to the River Thames yesterday. We left Pusey, but unfortunately it, the weather was not in our favour. So we decided to call it a halt after a very short journey and we're at Wooden Rivers, which is a very, very pretty little village full of thatched cottages and a nice 16th century thatch pub called the Royal Oak. So we spent the night here because it was horrible and this morning woke up to quite a foggy morning. This is Wooten Rivers lot number 51 and as you can see it looks like a sieve from the walls and through this lock gate as well cascading down but this lock is a lock you have to leave it open, leave it empty rather. So we're going to go and take on some water before we move to our next lock. As, the, as Jonathan gets the boat ready, just about to push off, I'm just going to head up to the next lock and to set the lock for them. Had a look this morning, uh, it's empty, which is good. So it shouldn't be just a case of just opening the lock gates and um, the pair of them, Mark and Jonathan, cruising in. So, see you in a bit. So I can see daylight coming through the lock, so that means that it's empty. But here, if you look down here, is where they've had to restore the towpath as you can see it's very very thin so it's just a bit of part of the reconstruction of some of the 
eroded towpaths. But yeah, I think you can see there's footprints down there, so some clever person has decided to think it'd be okay to walk on it. There's the matting there used to edge it. So it's all about the conservation down here on the Cunnet and Avon. As you can see, look how thin it had eroded to just a strip. A long time if only can moor on that. Daylight coming through the lock. It's a very foggy start this morning, but the sun's come out. So this is Bridge 107. Green Bridge now. Road used many years ago by the farm, farm machinery and horses, but everything is just too heavy and it would have gone come across and into the fields so they could carry on working. So here we are. Paddles are up. This is lock the 52. It's another one that needs to be kept em empty. So this is the Heathley Close, Heathley Close lock. Lock 52. So that's one done. Just go around and do the other side. Beautifully lush green. Pretty. I think this must have had the defences on it, which is the old concrete blocks to stop tanks going through from the war. And I think this one must have had theirs all smashed up because it's so high and I think they then grassed it over so they could carry on using the track but now sadly out of use because the machinery is just too heavy for the bridges these days so I'll just push this one open heron just down here on the lock landing and a couple of ge Canadian geese to my left there he goes that's the second one it was two here just now very pretty stretch of the Kennet Navin here except from Wharton Rivers Another leaky lock. And then we've got Jonathan coming in. So that's Jonathan now coming up in the lock on his own. And uh, then I have to drain it down, that mark in, and do the whole process again. Today we had a mass 
eruption of dandelion seeds. Yeah. And now we've got a carpet of seeds all over the canal. It's all in the air, it's like confetti. We had a we had a lovely mooring spot here. This is um, Ram Alley. Yesterday evening it was really gorgeous, lovely walking for the dogs. However, it is the summit of the Kennet and Avon Canal and the water level dropped quite a bit yesterday. To the point that this morning the teapot decided to walk across the counter on its own. So we've decided that uh, after pushing and pushing around it still was no good. Um, so we're moving which is such a shame because I heard the first cuckoo this morning here and it is such such a gorgeous place um, and as Mark's not with us for a couple of days we're moving his boat as well so we're towing Mark's boat Real, real shame because it is such a beautiful spot. Hey ho, here we go. Strange to think the last time we came down this part, it was actually covered in ice and we were breaking it to get through. I don't know if you can still make out, there's a haze on the water and that was from the dandelion clocks yesterday, which coated all the water. We have another tree down. Across the towpath and into the canal. Well, here's the one of the trees we encountered when we came through here in the ice, which caused a huge big scratch down the side of the our boat. So that's still here, causing a problem in the water. And the other one has been cut down and taken away, but that one is still a hazard. That's the Bruce Tunnel again. <laughs> 